Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sound Design for Video Games. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the sound production techniques that we used to create the engine audio sound inside of our racing game. Let's go take a listen. For the demo racing game, we're using a mixture of noise filtering and synthesis to essentially create the car engine sound. I'll go into it right now. There are three components. The first element is noise filtering. You can kind of think of noise filtering like a sculptor. So you have a big block of rock or marble, and the idea is you're gonna sculpt that into something else. Now in this case, we're not using rock or marble, we're using noise, and what we have is white noise, pink noise, and brownian noise. And the differences between them is essentially how much the high frequencies fall off. So white noise is all of the frequencies from low to high, it represented at equal intensities, where you can see by this graphic here, pink noise allows those high frequencies to drop off, and brownian noise even more aggressively the high frequencies will drop off. We're then going into a plugin called Snap Heap by Kilohertz. Snap Heap is a really cool plugin because what it enables you to do, it enables you to load up these little modules here and you can have them processed in either serial or parallel via these buttons here. So if you look here and here, if those buttons are lit up blue, that means that they are being processed in parallel, which essentially means for each of these processes here, we are essentially creating a duplicate Brownian noise. So the Brownian noise comes into here and it's going processed through here. There's a new Brownian noise here, which is processed through here and here and here and here. And eventually they are summed at the end where it is being used in serial. The other cool thing you can do with Snap Heap is you can set up these macros here, which are particularly useful for when you need to automate, which we do need to automate because we want our engine rotation speed to essentially allow that to influence how these filters move. So I'll speak briefly about these filters now. Essentially what we're doing is we are using high passes and low passes to essentially create a little pinch on the frequency response. And now because it's noise, it's gonna sound naturally noisy. And the idea is, this is sort of the atonal aspect of the engine sound. An engine is obviously a very noisy thing, so it made sense to use noise for this. So as we filter these, we're essentially bringing up the high pass to an area where we want the first harmonic and we're moving down a low pass to essentially pinch at that first harmonic there and then we're using the Q value to figure out how wide we want that and ultimately that's gonna create how noisy it is so a wider Q value will sound more noisy because you're letting more of those frequencies occur in that space where a lower Q value will pinch it even more and make that frequency much more focused. Now here's what the Brownian noise actually sounds like completely by itself. So you can hear just a basic noise sound. Now here it is coming through Snap Heap. So you can hear there we're getting quite close to that engine rumble sound and we have a load of controls here. I'm just going to go over the mass control just for now which is essentially attached to the pitch control and then the pitch control is attached to all of these cutoff filters so that we can move those filters up and down. So I'll just show you what that does right now. So when you're creating sounds like this, which require a lot of filtering and you know you're gonna be pitch shifting them later, and also shift them between the different sounds that you're going to export, it's quite good to be able to have these macros and just very quickly move those filters to where they need to be. 
Now finally, for the LFO table down here, what I want to talk about is what that is doing and what that's trying to imitate. We are eventually going to remove this, so when I'm exporting this little filter section, I will remove the LFO table because I want to do that inside of Unreal Engine so that I can lock everything to the LFO inside of Unreal Engine. But just so that we can hear the effect that it's going to have, it's quite nice to have it there. Essentially what it's doing is it is trying to imitate the sort of the pulsing of an engine. So the way the pistons fire, uh, the way the, if it's like a rotary engine, the way those explosions happen, they kind of are going to expand and compress, expand and compress. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here with the LFO table. So I'll show you it with. So you should be able to hear that slight sort of wah 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 kind of sound. I'll accentuate it even more. So it's getting a bit helicoptery at that intensity. If I bring that down now, what you will start to hear is the engine will sound completely flat. Now well, that's where to me it's just starting to sound like normal noise there, and it doesn't in the slightest bit sound like a car engine. So using something like an LFO is quite important when you're trying to give that sense of, for instance, combustion. If it was a completely electric vehicle, you might decide not to use the LFO and go for that sort of flat sound. So if I leave it flat now and show you some pitch shifting with it flat, it might sound a little bit more like an electric vehicle. One thing I want to mention is how you decide where these filters should be. The best way of deciding that is to go get a recording of an actual real car engine sound. Get Try and get an, an idle recording, try and get one where it's revving up and down, and use a frequency analyzer to analyze where those harmonics are so you get an idea of what the harmonic profile actually looks like. Now the next phase is to create that engine tick sound so when an engine's firing over it kind of makes a, a very slight ticking sound. It tends to be a lot more pronounced on diesel engines but it, it does exist with normal uh, petrol style combustion engines. So what we did to create that is we're using the Anna 2 sampler, sorry Anna 2 synth I should say, and then in the sampler section, we have loaded up a white noise. And that white noise is being transiently shaped using this here, the G envelope. And we're basically automating this volume all so that over a degree of time, it's going to be lowering the volume and then bringing that volume back up. And it's going to be doing that very, very quickly, basically like an LFO. The great thing about the G envelope is I can essentially put these little points in and shape the way that this shapes the sound transiently any way that I like. So that's the benefit of using the G envelope. We're then taking that sound and putting it through Snap Heap. Here on this parallel channel, we have some filters which are there to essentially shape the sound in a desirable way. These are really the more important ones. These are here to create that sort of harmonic boost in the low end, which is going to give it that sense of like a fundamental frequency, sort of like that resonance point that every object has. So for instance, if I knock on this wood here, it's got a resonance point and you can look at that in a frequency response and you'll see in the lower end, it'll have that lower fundamental that our ear will pick up as a resonance point. So I'm trying to implement that here with these bandpass filters. Uh, down here we have a randomizer and what that is essentially connected to are these. So over time what that is doing it's basically wobbling them left and right which essentially allows it to sound a little bit more organic because if it's exactly the same frequency every single time you get what's called a machine gun effect where every single hit of this sound sounds identical where what we want is a more organic sound, we want each tick to sound like its own chaotic sound which has been influenced in that specific moment, which is going to make it sound a bit more realistic. 
Now this area here is another plugin called Multipass and this is where Kilo Hearts and Snap Heap and Multipass are really cool. Uh, now this video so far is starting to feel like a bit of a Kilo Hearts advert, I promise it's not. But what's really cool about this plugin is that Snap Heap can load Multipass and elements of Multipass can load elements of Snap Heap. So what we have here is we went and created um, a process with multi-pass and all of these are essentially macros that we created inside of multi-pass and then we loaded that in to snap heap so I'll show you what this is now basically multi-pass is a multi-band frequency plugin and all these are the individual bands the low the low mid the high mid and the high and what we're essentially doing is we are ultimately we're doing a little bit of frequency shaping here, but what I want to focus on is what we're doing with the transient shapers. We're essentially aggressively processing this white noise now, so that it basically has a transient that operates in a certain way and gives us that nice metallic click that we're looking for, which will make it sound like an engine ticking over. Here is the tick sound. We basically have some white noise here and we have the G envelope here. So what I want to do is just let's just listen to the white noise completely by itself. It's quite quiet at the moment. Just turn it up a little bit. So there's the white noise and what I will do now is I'll bring up this depth and this G envelope will start to very slightly start transient shaping that white noise. So let's take a listen to that. So you can hear it's starting to get a little bit helicoptery. Now, obviously, we don't want helicoptery. We want it to sound like a metallic click. So we put it through Snap Heap. And I'm going to disable Multipass just for now. But this is what these processes do. So I'll scroll down so you can see them all. So we've got these filters here this sort of very broad uh, low pass here, which is just shaving off some of those high frequencies. We've got our fundamental frequencies being put in here and our randomizer, but we have multipass disabled. So let's take a listen to this. It's probably too loud now. Let's bring that right down. There we go. So you can hear that low frequency bump that we're getting now, which is very much these fil filters that are responsible for that. Now, if I engage multi-pass, you'll hear the power of this multi-band transient shaping now. So you can hear it has completely transformed this sound and I have these macros here set up so I can actually change the effect of this whenever I like. So I can get that very hyper clinky type sound. I'll bring that back down. And I can get a sort of lower clinky sound here. It sounds a little bit more papery. Essentially the goal is to just balance them in such a way that it starts to sound like a metallic sound, essentially. Now we've had the atonal element, which is more noise filtering. We've had the tick element, which is going to give us that little bit of combustion style sound. The next thing we need is the tonal element. This is the part of the sound which is basically going to tell the player what the RPM of the car is. You want to be able to hear oh, the engine is rotating this fast, or it's firing this quickly. So what we have is a very large meta sound. It's actually much more simpler than it looks, so don't worry. It might look a little bit intimidating from here. Um, but what we have over here is a little synth section, and we're not going to go over this properly in this episode. All I want to do is show you that this is where we've made that synth sound. In the next episode, we're going to go into that in a lot more detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play and I'm going to trigger this over here. So these are essentially our noise filters and all of that is being mixed in with the engine tick sound as well. Now if I stop this, 
what I want to do is focus on just the synth sections. So to do that, I just need to unplug this area here. So now I only have the synth section eventually going to my output mono. And I'll replug that in later. So here is the synth section. We've got three sorts of waves and we have a triangle wave which actually isn't being used at the moment. So if you look here we have a graph input that says zero. That's essentially the volume of the triangle wave. So we don't actually use that. I was just experimenting with that. But let's take a listen to this synth section. So obviously it doesn't sound that great by itself, but once it's mixed in with the rest of the sounds, it actually sounds quite nice. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.